An inmate claims he snuck into R. Kelly's jail cell to attack the singer. This is Jeremiah Farmer, who claims he was forced to beat the Grammy winner. He controlled the media. And the, the, this media shit, everybody, whether it's social media, TV, or reality show, everybody believe this shit that they see in the media. Mm. Sean Carter is just as bad as the Diddler. And I know that for a fact. The scars to prove it. So it seemed like the police were on Diddy's side. Is that the idea there that he kind of had him doing his bidding? Well, it was more than they were on his side. They, they were actually doing his dirty work. And there was a picture of P. Diddy on the wall in the station. As the news of Diddy's arrest keeps making waves, new details have emerged showing that he might not have been alone in his actions. Apparently, we have started hearing stories of other powerful music executives similar things to people in the industry. Today, another music mogul that appears to have been exposed is none other than Jay-Z himself. Apparently, there is a claim that he was the one behind the attempt on R. Kelly's life. Attorneys for R. Kelly confirm the singer is now in solitary confinement in a downtown federal prison after an altercation earlier this week. They say he was moved there for his own protection. People are starting to connect dots between these powerful figures in the music industry. What makes things interesting is the timing. Diddy just got arrested and now R. Kelly's near-death footage is coming out. But let's not just talk about the video, let's connect the dots. This drama is much bigger than just R. Kelly. Could Jay-Z really have a hand in this? And what about Diddy's recent arrest? How does all this connect? You guys can remember how R. Kelly was attacked in prison some time ago. But for those of you who don't remember, let's break it down. An inmate claims he snuck into R. Kelly's jail cell to attack the singer. This is Jeremiah Farmer who claims he was forced to beat the Grammy winner. First, R. Kelly has been in prison for some time now. Back in 2020, he was attacked in his jail cell by a man named Jeremiah Farmer. This wasn't just some random guy. Farmer is a 39-year-old member of the Latin Kings gang, which is one of the most dangerous gangs in the US he's known for committing terrible crimes. Like businessmen in 1999. Farmer didn't just rob people, he beat them to with a hammer. That's how dangerous he is. Farmer in jail for racketeering conspiracy. He was, quote, forced to assault hip hop and R&B singer R. Kelly in hopes of getting spotlight attention and world news notice to shed light on the government corruption, end quote. In 2019, Farmer was sentenced to life in prison for all his crimes. But even behind bars, he still managed to cause trouble. Out of nowhere, Farmer attacked R. Kelly while he was sleeping in his prison cell. Why? Farmer said he wanted to get attention. He claimed the government was corrupt. And by attacking R. Kelly, he thought people would finally listen to him. Sounds crazy, right? But that's what he said. During the attack, Farmer repeatedly punched Kelly and was even planning to stab him with a pen. Luckily, a prison guard stepped in and stopped the <laughs> Kelly was left bruised and shaken, but he survived. This attack wasn't random, it was part of a bigger story. The orchestrated nature of this attack has suggested to some that the attack was planned by Jay-Z, a man whose public dislike of R. Kelly is no secret. But why would Jay attack him? Well, there have been rumors that R. Kelly is looking to snitch on some people to get a reduced sentence, and Jay-Z has a very dark side that the world needs to know about. The interesting thing is that Jay-Z and R. Kelly weren't always at odds. Back in the day, they worked together on music projects. Around the same time their album came out, R. Kelly got into serious legal trouble. A video of him with an girl surfaced, and he was charged with 21 counts of This was the beginning of R. Kelly's downfall. The tour he was supposed to do with Jay-Z kept getting delayed, and it wasn't long before their partnership started to fall apart. Jay-Z reportedly became frustrated with R. Kelly's behavior especially because Kelly was showing up late, or not at all for important rehearsals. The tension between them boiled over during a 2004 performance in New York. R. Kelly stopped the show, claiming that someone in the crowd was waving a gun at him. This claim was never proven, but it caused a big scene. Everybody, you okay? You safe? There's no guns in the building. I really, really tried to hold this thing together. I really tried. I was really patient. Afterwards, someone from Jay-Z's team pepper sprayed R. Kelly, and that was the final straw. Jay-Z kicked R. Kelly off the tour and replaced him with other artists like P. Diddy. Both stars later sued each other, but those lawsuits were settled out of court. He sued Jay-Z, Atlantic Worldwide, and Jay-Z's company, Marcy Projects. 
R. Kelly wanted $75 million in damages. You see, R. Kelly was dealing with legal troubles around this time. He was facing accusations of sleeping with un girls, and a lot of people in the music industry distanced themselves from him, but not Jay-Z. This raised eyebrows, especially after rapper Nas said in an interview that Jay-Z must have known about R. Kelly's disturbing behavior. Nas even hinted that Jay-Z saw freak-offs around R. Kelly, but chose to turn a blind eye. Uh, I've been around R. Kelly, I've been for that brother. I've, I've been on a tour with him. It didn't last too long, but I, I've been around him. I, I, I didn't see no 14 year old. According to some people like singer Jaguar Wright, Jay-Z has always been someone with a dark side. Wright has been vocal about how Jay-Z operates, saying he will do whatever it takes to keep his power in the industry, even if that means taking down others. She says people have been ignoring these truths because they don't want to tarnish their image of Jay-Z. These allegations appear to be related to Diddy. Even though Jay-Z and Diddy are like brothers, Jay-Z hasn't spoken anything about what is going on with him. Jaguar believes Jay-Z is a bigger monster than Diddy. He allegedly slept with a youngster signed to his label. However, when Beyonce found out about it, he quickly shut down the youngster's career. But these aren't the only allegations against Jay-Z. There have been claims that he dated teenage girls like Foxy Brown and Aaliyah when they were age. People are starting to connect these dots and wonder if Jay-Z's past is catching up with him now, and if R. Kelly knows things that could destroy Jay-Z's career. Now, fast forward to today. R. Kelly is in prison, serving time for the same kind of crimes that started back in the early 2000s. But things are getting even darker for him. Now, with Diddy's recent arrest, things are getting even more suspicious. Some believe that the sudden turn of events for Diddy could be connected to what's happening with R. Kelly. Could it be that Diddy, Jay-Z, and R. Kelly are all tangled up in some dark secrets? With time, we will find out. Y'all see this picture of Jay-Z Jay with Aaliyah when she was a I forgot about Jay, huh? We only know about Damon Dash messing with Aaliyah and, uh, and R. Kelly. But that ain't the only one that Jay had when she was a Yeah, I remember Fox Brown and Jay. Talking about Diddy's arrest, Diddy is in big trouble and many think he might be heading to prison soon. He's facing serious charges that include <laughs> racketeering, and transporting people for prostitution. <laughs> These accusations are really shocking and could change everything for him. Recently, the court revealed some dark details about Diddy's lifestyle. When authorities searched his properties, they found over 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant. These were allegedly used for wild parties called freak-off gatherings. Along with that, they discovered a lot of ammunition. This paints a scary picture, suggesting that Diddy was running a criminal operation. The charges against him are not small. They include forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and even trying to hide evidence from the police. It's a lot to take in, and it sounds like there's even more disturbing stuff that hasn't been made public yet. The indictment alleges that between 2008 and now, Combs used, threatened, and coerced his victims. It even alleges he led a racketeering conspiracy that engaged in forced labor, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice, among other crimes. Diddy was also denied a bond of $50 million. This means he will have to stay in jail while he waits for his trial. Many fans and media outlets are gearing up for what could be a very intense court case. Now, many are wondering if Diddy will start naming names to help himself in court. Some people believe he might mention Jay-Z's name. If Diddy feels that his freedom is at stake, he might do anything to reduce his sentence. There are rumors that both Diddy and Jay-Z have been involved in some questionable activities together. Well, at first glance, it might not seem like it because everyone knows that Jay-Z has had his fair share of run-ins with the law, and many more allegations about him, which he has seemed to escape. And let's not forget about Kim Porter, Diddy's ex, who passed away in 2018. Her death was ruled as being caused by pneumonia, but there have always been rumors that Diddy may have had a hand in it. Now, the rumors about Kim Porter are getting even wilder because there's talk of a book she was writing before she died. Supposedly, this book has now leaked, and it's being released under the title Kim's Lost Words. According to the gossip, it's 60 pages long and contains a collection of her diaries, spilling all the tea about Diddy's love life, which was apparently much more chaotic and scandalous than people knew. We're talking about alleged affairs with male and female musicians, wild orgies at his house, and all sorts of debauchery. Now to the latest on Diddy's indictment, the embattled music mogul placed on side watch at a detention center in New York City. This is where hearing from people who say they attended his infamous parties and are not surprised by the allegations against him. The book supposedly covers everything from the 1990s up until Kim's last year. What's even crazier is the claim that Kim had found and copied tapes of Diddy hooking up with young boys he managed. 
including one involving an 18-year-old who's now a household name. In the last part of a new memoir, Kim Porter's final message is haunting. She supposedly texted her friend saying, he got me, right before she called 911. This part really grabs your attention and raises questions about what happened to her. The book's publisher, Chris Todd, claims he got the memoir from one of Kim's close friends who had copies of her writing. Todd lightly edited the book and published it under a fake name, Jamal T. Millwood, for safety reasons. He didn't want his name on it at first because he felt the situation was dangerous. But now that Diddy has been arrested, he feels safer sharing Kim's story. Everyone needs to know Kim Porter's actual story. Getting the book out so people can hear from Kim in her own words, everything she was tricked into doing. There's still no clear proof that the book is real, but Todd has started selling hard copies on Amazon. He believes that this book is Kim's way of telling her story from beyond. Todd thinks Kim wanted her truth out there, especially now that Diddy is facing legal troubles. Some of the book's claims have already made headlines. One famous incident from 1999 is a nightclub shooting. Reports say Diddy pulled out a gun and then had a rapper named Shine take the blame. Diddy and his then-girlfriend, Jennifer Lopez, were arrested, but only Shine faced charges. This event has haunted Diddy for years. The book also talks about wild parties Diddy allegedly hosted. It claims these parties were filled with famous people and included threesomes and partner swapping. One shocking story mentions Kim waking up after being with a famous married woman, only to find Diddy leaving with a well-known rapper and the woman's husband. There's also been buzz about more witnesses coming forward to testify against Diddy, adding even more weight to the already heavy allegations surrounding him. Just recently, two S workers have reportedly come forward with information about their interactions with Diddy. One of them claims to have had an encounter with him back in 2014 and says they are willing to cooperate with federal authorities, sharing what they know about that night. There are some insane accusations in there. Insane. Ah, uh, 50 Cent's baby mother, Daphne Joy, was named as a s worker. The other witness has apparently been subpoenaed to testify in front of a grand jury. This means they aren't just voluntarily coming forward. They're legally required to share their testimony under oath. Here's the interesting thing about criminal charges. Mm -hmm. They supersede private agreements. If she gets subpoenaed in this federal case, yeah. she will have to get on the stand and reiterate everything that she said. If Diddy makes it through this whole ordeal and ends up in prison, it's not exactly going to be a walk in the park. People in there don't take too kindly to folks convicted of the kinds of crimes Diddy's being accused of. There are plenty of stories about how inmates who commit crimes like S or TF-ficking are treated behind bars, and it's not good. If he gets convicted, prison life could be a living nightmare for him. We are particularly talking about his gay scandals, and everyone knows that inmates do not take gay issues lightly. Prison life has a darker side that most people on the outside don't fully understand. One of the unspoken rules is simple. You don't want to be labeled as gay. Whether it's true or just a rumor, carrying that label can make your life much harder behind bars, especially as a rapper. In prison, it's not just about serving your time. It's also about how others see you. And in Diddy's case, that perception could make things way rougher for him in there. I mean, there's been a recent report via People magazine that Diddy has either been placed on watch or is about to be. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how watch works, it basically means that extra guards are assigned to keep a much closer eye on him than they would for other inmates. They'll be doing more frequent rounds, logging his behavior, and monitoring him for any signs that he might harm himself. To the latest on Diddy's indictment, the embattled music mogul placed on head watch at a detention center in New York City. Honestly, people aren't brushing off the possibility, especially because of the conditions at MDC. That place has been called hell on earth due to how terrible the living conditions are. But that's not even the worst of it. Apparently, a former warden warned that Diddy has to be extra cautious in prison because he's a target. Diddy's upcoming trial brings a lot of questions. Will he name names to protect himself? Could Jay-Z be one of those names? The rumors surrounding their past are troubling, and it leaves fans and the public wondering how far one might go to save themselves from the law. Only time will tell what will happen in court, but the stakes are high, and the world will be watching closely.